तव च काल न स्तुतिरंबिके सकल शब्दमय किल ते कनु निखिल मुहूर्ति सुमे भवदन्वयो मनसी जासु बही प्रसरा सुचा इति विचिन्त शिवे समिता शिवे जगति जात मयत नवशादिदं स्तुति जपार चन चिन्तन वर्जिता नखलु का चन काल कलास्ति मे Mother, how can I pray you as your body is comprised of every single word? Every word I see outside and in my own mind, every single form is your own body. With this vision, Mother, whatever I do with mind and the body is all your prayers, as I have not done anything but to pray you. Avinava Gupta from Kashmir. 11th century Shaivite philosopher. These days they have started talking about is uh, a Shaivism a separate thing and Shaktism a separate thing. Vedanta a different thing and Kashmir Shaivism a different thing and this ism is different from that ism. You know that's, that's a kind of occupational hazard. <laughs> <laughs> If we do not accept these categories, we lose our jobs. The tender balance between being honest to yourself and also keeping the job lies in recognizing the play of the mother. This is her game and once we accept it, it becomes normal. <laughs> okay, if this is your rule, I can play that way, you know. After all, chess, you know, if kids say, no, from now on, horses are rooks and rooks are horses. Fine. We can play that way. <laughs> this theory, somebody asked me, but why does there need to be an absolute unity? oneness, like Plotinus called the one. Why not many, or why not nothing? That's also occupational hazard. Why not this? This is just therapeutic. These days we do philosophy to entertain our mind. Those days they did philosophy to liberate from the mind. <laughs> and we make theories to appease to ideas, to theorize. They made ideas to liberate us from theories, from ideas. Is there a contradiction? I've come to resolve this contradiction by the grace of the mother. In this non-dual, monistic, whatever, Advaita, Advaya, you, whatever the term you like to give it to, 
there are two types of experiences. We are trying to encapsulate in words the divine experiences of the saints who imparted their wisdom sometimes in words but mostly through direct channeling of their experiences beyond words. Some people experienced that in one specific way and others in a different way. If there is one reality, why is this experience so many different ways? One of my undergraduate students asked just this past week. My example was simple. If I go now to the East Coast and my friends, I see them playing out swimming, and they call me, I might say, it's a little cold for me. I dive in, they dive in. They feel warm, I feel cold. My experience is also true experience. Their experience is also true experience. The water is the same. One says warm, another says cold. Depending on the state, the sadhakas were before they plunged into this divine ocean of experience. People have reported differently. The thing that we only have a faint idea, a, a, a simulation of what it is, because we cannot take a picture of that thing. You can take your family to Lake Tahoe and not even see the sunset by just taking snapshots. But if you ever plunge into this divine experience, there is no snapshots to take. If you are taking snapshots, you are not there yet. When you come out, the memory is a reproduction of the past experience. Somehow the mind trying to cope up with something beyond mind that is destined to fail. 